We are joined now by no one else but the chairman of India's largest bank, Dinesh Kumar Khara, uh, the chairman of the State Bank of India. Mr. Khara, thank you very much for joining us here on Business Today. Uh, the question that everyone wants to know is, the RBI has now, for the second time in a short period of time, hiked the repo rate and it will get passed on in some format. Uh, and uh, your thoughts on what you will do as a bank and whether it will be effective uh, in controlling uh, the inflation monster that we seem to be grappling with. Yeah, I think uh, if we really look at it, the inflation risk which were flagged in April and May, uh, resolutions of the MPC, they have actually now materialized if we look at the inflation numbers. So which means that uh, the, this is something, inflation of course, uh, we keep on saying that it's, it has become a global phenomenon. So, and since the economy is coupled with the, the globe, so naturally it gets imported into the economy. So, uh, and I think in such a situation when uh, 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 RBI is supposed to really ensure that uh, uh, the growth is maintained in the economy and at the same time, the orderliness remains in the economy, perhaps this was warranted and uh, uh, also uh, it may not be out of place to mention that uh, uh, inflation trajectory across the globe is still not uh, uh, really receding. This is something essentially attributed to geopolitical tensions. Mm -hmm. So naturally in such a situation, there is a need for a calibrated monetary policy action. And uh, in that context, I would say that inflation expectation has more or less got anchored and uh, uh, there is adequate restraint as far as uh, the pressures on the prices are concerned. So I think that uh, that's the context in which uh, this kind of a policy has been announced by RBI. Uh, before I go across to my colleague Abha, a quick follow-up, sir. What does this mean for State Bank of India customers? And you have such a large customer base. Uh, are you going to hike uh, the lending rate and perhaps the savings rate as well? No, I think uh, we'll have to, uh, we'll actually be uh, going through the data in our ALCO and once we have a clear visibility in terms of the trend on the ground, then perhaps we'll be taking a call. Having said that, uh, I would also like to mention that uh, still there is excess liquidity in the system and that is perhaps the reason why perhaps, uh, the way the interest rates are quoted may not be really transferring the full increase in uh, the repo rate. But nevertheless, uh, the, there are uh, other uh, loan contracts which are linked to uh, the variable interest rate benchmarks, which could be MCLRs, which could be EBLR, which could be repo rate, etc. So for such, for such loan contracts, it will lead to uh, an increase in interest rates. But as far as contacting new contacts are concerned, there apart from uh, the base uh, or maybe uh, the benchmark, there would be some kind of a risk premium, which also is a function of the excess liquidity with the, each of the bank. So I think we'll have to perhaps wait and watch uh, for the ELCO to meet and then we will be in a position to take some calls. Okay. Mr. Khara, how much of an impact is this uh move going to have on inflation given that what we're really seeing is uh, a spiraling on food prices i know you talked about the wider factors at play uh, but you know how much really can monetary policy at this point play a role in containing uh, the root of inflation well as far as uh, uh, see the, this is one of the conventional tools which is available mm. And uh, this was the point of time when we had seen excess liquidity in the system mm. across the globe. And that was something which had started impacting. So it was, uh, uh, it was naturally, you know, that had led to a situation where perhaps uh, increasing of the, the repo rate will probably uh, be in a position to take care of the excess liquidity power in the system. So that is something which has been done. So how much of it will uh, be uh, help in containing the inflation, probably. Uh, see, uh, the other very important aspect for inflation is the kind of a capacity which is available, 
we still have very decent capacity which is available our capacity utilization in the economy has improved for to up to 74.5% but still about 25% of the capacity is available to be tapped mm. so i think supply side constraints i don't perceive much so and also when it comes to rural economy we are expecting a normal monsoon so if at all that is the kind of a situation from uh, the when it comes to the crops we are expecting decent crop and uh, that will probably take care of the food inflation part of it so i think uh, to my mind still uh, the major risk is essentially coming from the imports of uh, the crude as well as the edible oil but lot many steps have been taken by G- government of india in terms of rationalizing the duty structures and also the taxes so that is also mitigating part of the impact of uh, uh, the, the the global price rise on on these commodities uh, mr khara uh, i want to ask you about uh, the linkage of um, uh, with credit cards as far as the upi system is concerned but before i do that i want to once again on behalf of india today viewers ask you what happens to those who hold fixed deposits are or planning to uh, put in some fixed deposits can they expect better returns following the rbi's moves uh again this will be a, a subject matter of discussion in our alco wherein we will be reviewing the position of uh, different maturities so when it comes to the existing fix, fixed deposit holders they will uh, i mean as per the contract they will continue to earn the interest rate which be, uh, at, at which they have contracted that fixed deposit but as far as fresh fresh fixed deposits would be concerned they would be according to the new rates and uh, the the new rates also will depend upon um, the kind of all co i mean asset liability position is concerned with each of the bank and uh, uh, we started increasing our deposit rates for certain maturities we have increased it um, in the last all co meeting so we'll be taking very conscious call to ensure that our overall cost of uh, resources remains uh, within range and uh, it should not adversely impact our nim so that is we need to do fine balancing always so that is something which we will do uh, mr karak could you also explain how this move initially for rupee credit cards will play out uh, people are asking this question that does it mean that small payments that we make through upi can now be linked to credit cards and instead of directly paying from the bank account you can earn a window of 30 days uh, of interest free credit yeah certainly i think it's a very welcome move which has happened and to start with it, it is uh, two pay cards uh, has been offered uh, I mean, uh, they can be used for upi payments too so i think it's a very welcome step at the maybe going forward maybe we uh, we might get to see it happening with the other uh, cards also visa master also All right, Mr. Khara, the uh, governor also indicated that there would be a continued rate hikes, at least another one before the year is out. Uh, you know, what's your overall perspective when you uh, when you kind of look at how things are going to shape up over the next few months in terms of both inflation and growth, given that uh, monetary policy is already uh, talking about being far less accommodative? Uh, I think uh, uh, perhaps we'll have to wait and watch for uh, how really the. the growth pans out how the excess liquidity in the system gets absorbed so i think those are those will be the factors which will be eventually impacting on the broad macro data which will be very very carefully looked into before any policy uh, decisions are taken so uh, we'll be very closely watching the situation and uh, it's too early to really uh, indicate for uh, as a bank it is too early to really predict any kind of a Uh, interest rate trajectory going forward okay we have been hearing of course that on the uh, corporate side uh, there still hasn't been too much of a change in terms of capacity expansion plans and so forth uh, do you see any significant uh, uh, implications uh, when it comes to uh, capex and and the plans of corporates uh, you know in light of the uh, rising rates at least in the second half of the year so actually uh, the way i have seen uh, the behavior of the corporates mm. 
they look at the demand if at all demand is there then perhaps uh, in, uh, this may not have any much of impact on the uh, their investment plans so that's how i interpret uh, how the corporates evaluate the the situation in the economy so i think and overall also uh, we have looked at it that uh, large corporates have really raised their balance sheet quite a lot so there is hardly any interest cost for them but if at all uh, they they are in a position to see the demand i think uh, it will be a time when perhaps they will be investing for adding the uh, the new uh, new capacities also um, in the current financial year we have seen the traction in that direction and uh, i expect to see it going forward for it there is a strong demand and if you if you look around the economy is still as per the rbi projections also is expected to grow at 7.2% and perhaps one of the uh, very few large economies where uh, this kind of a growth will be seen in the current year so i think to that extent uh, we have a reasonably decent chances to see investment from the private sector also coming though government will continue to take the lead in terms of supporting the investment climate in the country All right Mr Khara great having you with us thank you for taking out the time on the day of the policy and talking to us about some of the implications going forward Dinesh Khara chairman SBI with us here on business today Thank you thank you very much Thank you very much If you like the video do like comment share and subscribe